Thanks for dropping in. In the last video, I created these mini shutter fidgets. The sliding shutter provides some nice tactile feedback without all the noise of some of my louder fidget designs. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can design your own custom shutter fidget. I'll also share some stylish alternate shutters to customize your prints even further. So let's jump over to the computer and get to it. Here we are in Fusion 360, which is the modeling software I use the most. If you don't have this program, everything I'm going to cover is supported by the hobbyist version, which is free. I've already opened a template file with everything we'll need for this demo. If you want to follow along step by step, links to download this file are available in the video description. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a few example fidgets I've already created. Below those, we have all the 2D sketches that Fusion 360 uses to build those 3D models. The most important sketch here is the side sketch. Let's switch that on and take a closer look. As you can see, this defines a cross section of the fidget. It's what you'd see if you cut the fidget in half. The next sketches set the overall shape of each example fidget. Notice that they all intersect at the same starting point, the origin of the design. Let's hide these examples and create a new design. First, we'll start a new sketch and set that to the top plane. For this example, I'm going to use the spline tool to make a simple, loosely defined closed loop. It's important that we start and end the loop at the sketch origin. We also want to make sure that this path is tangent to the cross section. You can lock that in by selecting the loop to reveal these handlebars at every spline point. Next, click the handlebar that runs through the sketch origin and then click the horizontal vertical constraint option that's at the top of the screen. Now, no matter how we drag these points around, the overall shape will still flow through the origin point. I'm happy with this shape for now, so let's click finish to exit the sketch mode. With these two sketches, we have everything needed to create the 3D shape of our new custom fidget. Under the Create menu, select the Sweep tool. For Profile, let's select the bottom half of the fidget's cross-section, and for the path, we'll select the custom spline we just made. If you get an error at this step, it probably means that the custom path had some corners that were too tight for the Sweep tool to follow. If that happens, just go back into your custom shape sketch and move some points around until it works. If all goes well, like it did here, we'll get a nice preview of the bottom frame and we can select OK. We also need to create the top frame. This is the same process as before, but make sure you set Operation to New Body. Otherwise, you might merge both frame halves into a single piece, and that wouldn't be printable. Now that we have a rendered frame, we can go back to the custom sketch and just move points around until we get a shape we're happy with. Once that's done, we can export these frames and start printing. While those are printing, I have something else to share. Four new shutter designs, hexagons, squares, bricks, and text. Actually, the text shutter is available just as a flat band. That way, if you have access to modeling software or a slicer that supports it, you can add your own custom text. These are all 250 millimeters long, which you can trim down as needed. If you need a longer shutter, I'm making the Fusion 360 files available for these as well, so you can resize them to fit. Oh, hold on a second. The custom fidget frames are done. Let's add a shutter and get these snapped together. That worked out pretty well, although this particular design has some sharp corners, so I wouldn't be surprised if this PLA cover eventually got a little worn and even snapped. So if you are making a design like this, 
you might want to print the shutter in PETG, or a similar, tougher material. Another way to make shutters last longer is you can print them entirely out of perimeter lines. So set your perimeter count to, say, 40 or 50. In that way, all the filament lines will run in this direction, both for the first layer and for the second layer. Those long bands are less likely to get stressed out from bending around these curves. Just some tips to keep in mind as you're printing your own copies. And if you make your own custom designs, I'd love to see the results. But until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. And here's a bonus update for those who knew to stick around till the end. This is my roll-up dice box. It's been one of my more popular recent designs. But there is an issue that I've heard about with some dice sets. In rare occasions, the D20 is just slightly too large to sit flat in bins with a hexagon hull. Since they're not sitting flat, the point of the D20 will push against the core and keep this from closing up all the way. To solve that, I'm releasing updated versions of the core with slightly inset walls on every single side. This only gains one extra millimeter, but it should be enough to counter that D20 issue. This update is available in the small and large roll-up dice boxes, as well as the dice tower versions. If you've experienced that issue, hopefully this will solve it for you. Thanks for printing, and I'll see you next time.